Writing Matters with Dr. Troy Hicks is a writable podcast. Find more episodes and subscribe on your favorite platforms. And if you want to learn how to grow great writers, check out writable.com. In this episode of Writing Matters, we speak with Jen Lafine, a former elementary teacher, National Writing Project teacher consultant, and founder of Teach Write, a consultancy that helps teacher writers find their voice. We speak about her journey as an educator and how struggle is part of the writing process. Welcome to Writing Matters. Today, we speak with my friend and colleague, Jennifer Lafine from Wisconsin, a former uh, elementary classroom teacher and NWP teacher consultant and the founder of Teach Write. Welcome. Well, thank you, Troy. Glad to be here today. Yes, glad to have you. So. You have a varied and interesting pathway that has brought you to where you're at right now as a um, professional learning consultant uh, with Teach Right. Tell us a little bit about your journey through education and how you've come to arrive at where you are now. Awesome. Yes, actually, um, I have a bachelor's degree in English. Um, so I wanted to, uh, you know, write the, the great American novel from the time I was young. And um, when I went through school, I uh, thought about getting a degree in education as well, but uh, that path didn't actually happen until later in life. So I didn't get my teaching certificate or my teaching um, certification until I was in my 30s and my kids were settled, you know, nestled all snug into their elementary school. Um, So coming a little bit later to the game um, was also gave me an interesting perspective on education. I uh, started teaching fourth and fifth grade. I've taught fourth and fifth grade for 10 years. And when I started teaching, um, I, like many other teachers, had no clue how to teach writing. And as an English major, this really bothered me. Um, My very first year of teaching, we didn't have a curriculum. Um, I didn't know because They didn't cover that in my teaching um, courses in college. Um, So my students, my very first year, wrote one time, and it was the end of the year, they wrote a Mother's Day poem. I will never forget that. And at that point, I was like, this is wrong. I've got to figure this out. So I started to uh, read anything and everything I could get my hands on and um, basically taught myself how to teach writing. And um, felt like things were going really great. And then it was like a couple years. And I thought, I don't really know where to go next with this. Like, I felt like there was something missing. And in the summer of 2012, I uh, participated in the National Writing Project Summer Writing Institute at UW-Milwaukee. And it was there that I learned how important it is that I am a writer myself along with my students. And after taking the Summer Institute, I felt like, like, ah, like it was amazing because I now knew how to um, bring more writing into my classroom. I learned how to help my students move forward as writers. I was like a mentor author in the classroom. I knew how to plan mini lessons better because as a writer myself, um, I was able to tell what my students needed next. And I would say it really was the turning point in my, um, in my teaching career. And I absolutely adored it. And I loved it so much that I wanted to help other teachers who were struggling with writing. Um, so in 2017, I left the classroom and I started TeachWrite, which is an educational consulting company. We help teachers and their students grow as writers. And everything that I do with TeachWrite is based on the foundation of the teacher as writer and helping that teacher transfer that knowledge to their instruction. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. That's amazing. So as you think about that transition for you, as you moved back into the classroom from that single Mother's Day poem into something that was more akin to a writing workshop with many lessons and conferring and with all those other types of interactions, 
how would you describe that? Because my guess is that if you're like others that I know have gone through that transformation, it's exciting, but it's also very uncomfortable. And it puts the teacher in a slightly different role in the classroom. And it sets up some different dynamics with the relationships you have with your students. Tell us a little bit more. What did that look like? What did that feel like for you during that time frame as you were implementing writing workshops? So coming back into the classroom as a teacher writer, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. As you as you were trying to bring that that NWP approach to your classroom mm-hmm. and really mm-hmm. um, move into that space as a mm-hmm. teacher writer and welcoming your students to be writers and not just writing for schooly purposes, but Absolutely. to actually write for other authentic audiences. Absolutely. Um, I would say yes. It was it was exciting. Um, my students, I would say, you know, you're absolutely right. Like our relationship changed because it was no longer teacher to student writer. It was writer to writer. And um, in a lot of ways, I think that made writing instruction so much easier because it gave me more credibility with my students. So as I um, became a writer in my classroom and was able to talk writer to writer with my students, um, they realized that struggle is a part of the writing process because they saw me struggle. So beforehand, when my students would struggle with writing, they would think it was a sign they were doing something wrong. And by me being able to model that struggle for them and show them, yes, writing is messy, but we can push through it. And it's beautiful on the other side when we get our thoughts down on paper and they say what we want them to say. It just takes Mm -hmm. that perseverance. And I think so many students don't like they're turned off from writing because of that struggle and because they've, they've been conditioned to equate struggle with, um, with I'm not smart enough or I don't know what I'm doing when really with writing, it is a part of the process. You talk to published authors, they struggle all the time. So Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was really, really key. And it was a understanding that I would never have had if I wasn't a teacher writer. Right. And so as you think about helping students, um, for lack of a better term, lean into that struggle and see that this kind of failure and change and growth and all that, how does that contribute overall to students' long-term success? Like once they make that pivot and once they start to to say that, yes, I'm a writer and writers face challenges, what did you see happen for your students and how did that change their perspective on what it meant to write? Uh, Well, first of all, I saw them taking a lot more risks with their writing, Mm -hmm. which was very exciting uh, because that's where they were really able to grow and able to um, you know, try new things, and whether that was writing in a new genre, um, trying something different with their writing, like there was definitely some risk taking there. Um, can I share a story here? Oh, for sure. Awesome, okay. So um, my last year in the classroom, I came up with the idea that I wanted to start writing um, middle grade fiction. And so I signed up, for the uh, Institute of Children's Literature Fiction or Writing for Children workshop. Mm -hmm. And it was a very cool program. Um, And they pair you with an author. And there's there's different modules you have to do that teach you different things about writing for children. And at the end of the module, you have to produce a piece of writing that you send in to your mentor author for feedback. Okay, really great. So thankfully... I happen to have the ideal audience sitting in front of me all day. And so before I would send my work into my uh, mentor author, I would copy it and I would ask my students to give me feedback on my writing. And they would, um, they would do something called tag, which is it's a feedback pro- uh, procedure I learned through the writing project when I participated that summer. T means tell something you like, A is ask a question, G is give a suggestion. Um, They gave me the most amazing feedback. Mm -hmm. And they noticed like the the most, the things that I had completely skipped over 
And that was such a, an incredible investment because they were like, oh, I can help my teacher. I can give her feedback on her writing. And ever since then, I have always tried in the professional development work I do, I've always tried to share how important it is to bring your students into your writing life and let them not only see what you're doing, but let them help you if they can, because they know a lot more, I think, than we give them credit for. Um, but again, like you had asked, like, how is the, that, you know, that understanding about struggle, how does that change everything? Mm -hmm. I think that's also a great example. Like, they know what that struggle looks like and they know that they can not only support me, but then they could support each other. So we really started having a writing community in our classroom. Mm. It was very cool that I was a part of it. Nice. Nice. So maybe to ask a delicate question, but did your children's book uh, get published or what happened did to not. it after that? <laughs> uh, uh. It did not, not yet, it, but I will tell you that they, um, when I got my feedback letter from my, from my mentor author, I brought it in and read it to them. And they're like, they were so just engaged in the whole process because they were, they were a part of that assignment as well. So it was very cool. Very cool experience. Yeah. So. Well, and the right and the writing continues, correct? <laughs> <laughs> it, that it does. It keeps going on. So. That it does. Yeah. And so now you have conversations with other teachers uh, through your consultancy with Teach Right. And I imagine in some ways that having these conversations with other educators is very similar to having conversations with students and trying to help them take risks. So tell us a little bit more about your current work. Tell us about the ways that you um, go about beginning this conversation with other teachers as you are trying to help them take on this mantle of teacher writer. Wonderful. Well, um, one of the things that I'm seeing in my work with schools is with some of the writing curriculums these days, teachers are being asked to do a lot of writing on their own to prepare for their instruction. And mm -hmm. what I'm finding is a lot of teachers are feeling overwhelmed by that and unsure of themselves as writers. So they feel um, maybe a little bit more hesitant to go forward with their instruction. Um, and being able to deliver effective instruction or wanting to deliver instruction at all. And I think so much of teachers' attitudes towards writing is transferred to their students. Mm -hmm. And if teachers are hesitant writers, I've, what, from what I've seen is their students are hesitant writers. So the first thing we have to do the, in the work that I do is kind of um, have teachers go back and explore their own writing histories and get back to the point of, so why is it that you feel this way about writing? And, you know, of course, there's a lot of research out there and a lot of published works about fear and you know, the red pen from when they were in school and just kind of trying to help teachers move past that um, to be able to embrace a, a journey of writing themselves. And that's just it. Writing is a journey. It's not a destination. In my opinion, mm -hmm. there is no piece of writing that is ever finished. <laughs> so. No. Right. Well, and you're right. And without falling too far down the rabbit hole of traditional schooling models and traditional writing curriculum and reductive assessment practices and all the scary and negative things we could talk about. I, I wonder, like, what's the lever? What's the way in which you might just help a teacher, you know, you pull that and say, hey, is it saying, hey, if you do this, this is going to help your students? Is it if you do this, this is going to help you. If you do this, this is going to like, what, again, what is it? What is the entryway into that conversation? Do you help them kind of come to this conclusion on their own? Do you share stories with them? What, what does that look like when you're trying to convince someone to become a writer? Well, I definitely do share my own story. Um, mm -hmm. But I also believe that teachers are good at heart and want to do right by their students and want to do what's best for their students. So I shared the story of my husband who um, a couple years ago 
decided he wanted to learn how to fly a plane. Mm -hmm. And so he signed up to take lessons and he went through all the, the book work and he went through all the, the, you know, the prep work. And then it came time for him to actually get in the plane and start flying. And he came home for the, for his, from his first flight. Uh, and I said to him, so uh, did your instructor stay on the ground and talk to you while you were up there flying? And he's like, no, they were right there next to me. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, of course they were. So when I'm talking to teachers and I say, would you want to learn to fly from somebody who didn't get in the airplane with you? Like, could you learn to fly if they were like talking to you over the radio and telling you what to do? Yeah, maybe. But your experience would be so much more effective if they were sitting next to you and Mm -hmm. telling you like, this is what I do when I fly. And when I have a problem, this is what I do. And this is where I look when I see this happening. And that just for some reason, like really makes it click Mm -hmm. for teachers. When we talk about the importance of teachers, like getting in the water with their students and living that life um, and having that shared experience with their students. It's also kind of like, swimming lessons. When my kids were going to swimming lessons, their teacher was right there in the water with them. She was not walking along the side of the pool. She was in there with them. And I probably would not have let them take swimming lessons like that if the teacher hadn't been in there with them. Right. So, right. so whatever metaphor it is, whether it's the airplane yep. or the pool, I mean, we, we best yep. jump in with them to make sure that they know that yes. we're, we're... And I'm them. really glad my husband's um, instructor was right there with me. <laughs> and not on the yes. ground radio in, in direction. Well, so. yes, there are, there, there's maybe some more safety concerns that, although I'm sure there's, there's concerns about safety when working with students and some of the stories that they might tell us too, and, there and being there for them and being present with them. So that leads of course, then to the role of feedback and the ways in which you position yourself as a provider of feedback. And also at the same time, whether we like it or not, we are also in the role of being an evaluator. How do you balance that? How do you think, well, broadly, what do you think about the role of feedback in writing? And then how do you balance that? I want to be supportive. I want to encourage you as a writer, as a fellow writer with the, okay, as teacher, I also have to help you get better. So tell Mm -hmm. us a little bit about the role that feedback plays in your teaching. I'm a huge fan of uh, Patty McGee's book, Feedback That Moves Writers Forward. Mm, Um, That's a great text that talks about um, conferring with students. And I think just like in reading, that conferring and writing is so key. And when you're conferring with a student, taking the time, you know, to celebrate the student and like you said, like as far as the evaluation portion, it's so important not to overload the student with, well, you didn't do this and I don't see capital letters and there's no periods here. Like you have to pick one thing that they want to work. I know Jen Saravala does a lot of work with this as well. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of resources out there to help teachers with conferring. But the difference Um, I think for me as because I'm a teacher writer, when I sit next to a student, I um, I'm talking to them writer to writer and I can say like, I see in your writing right here, we get a little, um, you know, a little bit off track or something. Let me tell you about what, what I've done with my writing, like what I've done in my writing life or how I've fixed this problem. Um, and let me show you how it worked for me. Do you think that would be something that might work for you? Like, let's try to take this whole paragraph out. Now I want, let's reread it and see how it, it, how it sounds, if it sounds better, if it sounds worse. But again, I know I am keep saying this, it's because I'm a teacher writer, I can do that work. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and again, I think building that kind of level of trust with students and yes. letting them know that, I'm on your side. I'm trying to help you move forward. I'm not here only to criticize you, but I'm actually here to give you some thoughtful feedback that will move you in a new direction. It's really important. So then as you, yeah. So then as you step back and again, look at the whole class and think about your mini lessons and the ways that you might 
present different types of topics and genres. What's a favorite of yours? What is it that you think is uh, really interesting and useful and engaging? It may be a particular topic or a prompt. It may be a broader assignment that stretches over a few days as a unit. Um, what is what is something that's worked well for you as a writing type of uh, task to engage your students in? Uh, before every um, before every writing workshop, we'd always do a quick write, and that was a great way to get like those writing muscles warmed up and the creativity fired up. Um, as part of Teach Write, I publish uh, word of the day every day on social media, it's with the hashtag DW habit. Mm -hmm. And the only rule for that is you just want to let the word of the day inspire your writing in some way. Um, so we would always spend like three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, depending on what we had going on that day, just kind of doing some free writing and um, getting, like I said, getting the writing muscles warmed up. And what I found is students were then ready to write when that time was over. We didn't have the, like the lag of let's get, you know, let's get thinking about our new project or um, they were ready to go. And as with the um, DW habit word of the day, I've gotten feedback from teachers that use that word about just like how um, giving their students that option to write about that word in their workshop that day has just opened up, you know, all different kinds of writing, all different kinds of collaborations, um, new insights into ways to interpret words, bringing new vocabulary in. So that I would say is the one thing that, um, that I really enjoy doing in the classroom. And I think my students enjoyed it too, so. Good, good. It's always interesting to just think about, you know, what are these little ways that we can get students just to start seeing things differently and collaborating in different ways. And mm -hmm. so, so when you say DW habit, I'm assuming you mean daily writing habit, but I just want to... I do. <laughs> okay, great, great. Gotcha. Cool. Well, so let, let's pivot and talk a little bit more about your work with TeachWrite and the fact sure. that you've been building this online community and you're engaging with teachers in so many different ways. So what does a, a day in the life of a teach right look like for you in terms of when you might be doing face-to-face -face consulting, online consulting, planning mm -hmm. classes, working with individual educators, or mm -hmm. maybe even a day is too short a snapshot. What would a whole week or month <laughs> I was gonna say, like? no two days are alike. I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> And that's kind of what I enjoy about it is, uh, is the variety, the amazing amount of people I've met through this work, um, getting into schools and being able to work with uh, teachers and staff, um, providing, you know, half day workshops. Um, I would say though, some of my favorite work that I do is with the Teach Right community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a monthly Twitter chat the first Monday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern. And every month the topic changes, but it's always focused in some way on being a teacher writer and how we can tie that into our instruction. And so I've met some really amazing um, educators through that Twitter chat, which has been a ton of fun. I love that. It's my favorite day of the month. And then also I do some online writing workshops with groups of teacher writers who um, we come together. As a matter of fact, I have one a little bit later today where we come together on Zoom and we talk about our writing. We talk about our writing instruction. We write together for about an hour on Zoom, uh, which is fun because you can see like everybody's picture up there on your screen while you're writing. So, you know, you're not going to get up and walk away. Um, you know, to go do something to avoid your writing. And then we come back together and talk about the experience and set a goal for the next week and go on our way. Um, but I would say these uh, teachers that I've worked with in the workshop have, they're some of my favorite people. And it's my, you know, I love that time of the week when we get to get together and write. Um, so that's, uh, that's where I focus a lot of my energy now is, 
in schools, but also, you know, working with that community and um, supporting them as best I can. Right. Right. And one of our shared friends and colleagues, Andy Shinborn, I know is a part of that mm -hmm. community. And mm -hmm. um, as you then think about welcoming other people to that community, how, how could people find out a little bit more? What, where would they go to find out how to become part of this writing group and the teach right community at large? Wonderful. Well, uh, you can follow the hashtag teach right on Twitter is probably the one of the best ways to to track me down. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at teachwriteedu, and we do have a Facebook group, which I believe um, maybe you'll put in the show notes, where people can ask to be a part of that group, and we'll be happy to to welcome you in. We're a very one of the things I love about the Teach Right group is we are all very supportive of each other and just really everybody's in the community is just really nice people. And um, I just, I really, I just adore them all. Um, so that's uh, we welcome anybody who wants to grow as a teacher writer into our, into our little world and bring a little happiness to everybody. So. Fantastic. So on any given night, if we were to tune into the zoom room and hear the conversation as people are setting goals and talking about their writing projects. What, what might we hear some of your colleagues working on at any given time? Uh, that's a really great question. We actually have, um, everybody's kind of working on something different, which is very cool because we can offer a lot of different perspectives and, and bring a lot of different experiences to the group. We've got people working on professional books. We've got um, people working on, Journal, journal articles. I've got um, one writer who is revising a, a book. And then I've got a couple of people who are just there and they are writing Anytime Pages, which are our adaptation of Julia Cameron's uh, Morning Pages because we can't get up that early to be able to write three pages longhand. So we do them <laughs> at night um, and call them Anytime Pages. So it's just pretty much open. Um, but we talk a lot about being a teacher writer and bringing that into our classroom, which is exactly what, what the work of Teach Right is. So um, it's very, very fun. Fantastic. A and lot of uh, laughing. A oh. lot of laughing. <laughs> it's a fun group. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And in a way, it feels kind of odd to ask you this question here at the end, um, because we've been talking about what it means to be a teacher writer for this whole episode. But one of the things I, I appreciate hearing from our guests uh, as we close our conversation is to think about the role of writing in your professional life. And though you've moved from the classroom space to the consultancy space, you are obviously writing and working with teachers on their writing. So as you think about the impact that writing has on your personal and professional life, how would you describe yourself as a teacher writer? Uh, well, I would say a lot of the work I'm doing in my writing right now is uh, memoir writing and preserving a little bit of, of my daily life for hopefully grandchildren <laughs> someday, a mm. <laughs> uh, long time from now. Um, <laughs> Uh, but just kind of taking some time every day to just record what's going on in my thinking, in my, you know, my daily life, so that someday someone's going to look back and have great grandma's journals and know what life was like in this time. I would, w I just wish I had something like that for my grandparents. Um, so I'm trying to make sure that, you know, my family that comes after me has a little, a little piece of, of what this was all about. So mm, that's great. Yeah, um, enjoy Jen Lafine, thank you <laughs> so much for being part of the conversation on writing matters. Thank you for the work that you do with teachers and with teach right more broadly and uh, good luck with your workshop later tonight. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful to talk with you. Writing Matters with Dr. Troy Hicks is a writable podcast. Discover more episodes and subscribe on your favorite streaming platforms. Or check out filmed episodes on YouTube.
And if you want to learn how to grow great writers, check out writable.com.